So this year the summit is titled Crossing the Divide and um, last year our theme was pushing past the pews. So we really looked at how do we um, raise that awareness, right, to even begin this work. So how do we really book mobilize and activate the church. Uh, this year we wanted to look also at an action-oriented word that's really important. Um, so when we talk about push, what happens after we push past something? Um, and there are obstacles. Uh, I think right now there's a lot of racial tension within our church and externally in society. There's just a lot going on. Um, we're talking about immigration. There are a lot of gender rights um, and a lot of uh, um, barriers that exist that can hinder how do you push past. So I think that the more this conversation grows, the more the conference is consistently being held, whether it's in a consistent place or different places, I think people will come because they know what they're going to experience. So I think the way to really get people galvanized and invested in ASJ is to continue to create an unparalleled experience because when I know I'm going to get a great experience, I spare no expense to have that experience. Oftentimes I hear this 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 uh, idea of the social gospel. There is no such a thing as a social gospel. It's the gospel and it has social implications as well as spiritual and, and uh, eternal implications. So I, I don't see why we need to divorce the two. It needs to be in every, pro, in every pro, uh, pulpit. Confusion is actually a good thing. That sometimes God brings confusion and disruption into our lives because otherwise, why would we want to change? So we really wanted to shift the conversation into learning how do we, one, um, hear and, and listen to the, the varying perspectives and narratives of, of each person, whether it's gender or race, um, and how do we really cross those divides so that we can work together to, to do this work of social justice. Forgive us for denying that dignity to the person who deserved it. We walk past them from those city streets. Forgive us for lacking compassion and grace towards our enemies sometimes. In our duty as Christians, because if the community is doing bad, then my church is doing bad. If my community is failing, then I'm failing as a pastor. If people are dying outside my church, then I am dead as well. I think conferences like this are important because we need to meet like meet like-minded people. We need to know that we're not alone because isolation is a tool of the devil. It's a tool of the devil to keep us um, from doing anything for the sake of the gospel. Why would Jesus choose 12? Why did he see that there was a need for community in order to move his word forward? He didn't choose one man to go forth and spread the gospel. He chose a tribe. And so I've come here to find my tribe. And I believe that we have a commission and that we have a vision. And together as a tribe, we will move out and do the work that God has called us to do. We need our church members to understand the importance of engaging the political sphere because a lot of these issues that we're passionate about happens within that sector. When we talk about immigration, when we talk about police brutality, when we talk about our restoring our community's economics and all those pieces, if we aren't aware of who are our representatives, if we aren't engaged actually and, and probably have some of our own people um, as, as elected officials and supporting them, if we aren't aware of, of who makes the laws in our neighborhood, who represents us and what their, um, what their platforms are, then we are at a disadvantage and we can't afford to be at a disadvantage. Voting is extremely important. Uh, especially in the 2018 midterm elections and locally, really on all levels. But because um, so many seats are up, we really want to start hosting some forums, educating on rights, on um, voting rights, on voter suppression laws, registering people to vote, registering young people to vote, and that's really the project that we're focusing on for the next year. I do, I do want to see my church. By, by, not by my church, I don't mean the Brown Church. I mean my church, my Adventist church, fully represented here because I think in conference like these is, is where we can anticipate real actual change in our, in our, in our denomination.
left, that if he came back today, we all better have a hiding place because he would not be able to recognize the church. Man, I think you'll, I, number one, I believe God is here. Number two, I believe that we have, you're going to be able to bump into people that are really about social justice and really want to learn. And I think it's a place where we have bright minds which can be iron sharpened iron. Uh, that's that's uh, number number two. And I guess number, number three is that uh, we're going to be equipped. You're, this is a place where we're not just talking, but we're equipping uh, we're equipping uh, each other with skills that we can go back to our local communities to help and uh, change lives. ASJ is really internal and external. So internally, we have really started this dialogue around race within our church, right? So we are continuing to push that and push that very hard. And as our Reverend Gail talks about today, this work of reconciliation is not the it's not the job of minorities. It's the job of the dominant culture to say, hey, we we want to be a part of just really, like she said, confessing, and then where do we go from there? So we're really pushing that hard, and we're not going to give up on that work within our churches.